Unit 2 For Art's Sake Section 1 Biju Spins Some Magic Biju accompanies his father from the village to the big city where he meets a city boy. Their lives are very different but each learns new things from the other. It was a hot afternoon in the quiet dusty village of Jilminda near Sambalpur in Odisha. Biju, all of nine years old, sat under a tree waiting for his father. He was going with Papa on a long journey. Biju, like most of the children in his village, did not go to school. He had wanted to go to school, but his parents had said there was no use in him learning things that had nothing to do with their weaving profession. He would just get useless thoughts in his head about working in an office. Biju had learned to read and write from J.G. Papa, his grandfather, who had been taught many things when he had worked for a while in the house of a local teacher. Biju's father and grandfather came from a long line of handloom weavers who had perfected the art of tying and dyeing the long yarn threads before they were woven. But it was hard work. Unless Biju, along with his mother, sisters and cousins, helped with the work, Bapa could never finish weaving the lengths of cloth he needed to sell to earn enough money to take care of the entire family. Biju often sat with his mother and sisters, winding the brilliantly coloured silk yarn onto a pools and spinning the fluffy cotton bunches into thread. Biju also helped his father stretch the long lengths of coloured yarn between two poles along the dusty street next to their hut. Biju would almost get hypnotised as he watched Papa fling the long bobbin back and forth between the threads. He would tighten the portion that was already woven with a metal comb and look constantly at the pattern as it emerged on the other side to make sure there were no flaws. The bobbin would move back and forth, back and forth, until a wonderful ikat pattern came alive. The main body of the sari, with the shimmering borders on both sides and an elaborate pallav at one end. With his mother and sisters, Biju would roll and press the finished cloth till it became a tight little package to be opened only to display to a customer. Biju woke suddenly from his mid-afternoon rivalry as Bapa tapped him on the head. He was carrying a small canvas shoulder bag with a zipper and two big cloth bundles. Hey Biju, wake up! Are you ready to go? Have you said goodbye to your mother and Jeji Bapa? Yes, Bapa, said Biju, suddenly alert, taking one of the bundles. He felt big and grown up. He was going to Delhi with Bapa to help him carry their bundles of saris. His father said they might get a better price if they went directly to the ladies who wore them instead of giving them to the traders in Sambalpur or a wholesaler in some big town. They walked to the bus stop and waited for 40 minutes in the scanty shade till the old wobbly bus arrived. It took them to Sambalpur town from where they caught the Hirakund Express to Nizamuddin station in New Delhi. The train journey was thrilling but a bit scary. Biju had to sleep leaning against his father's arm all night and there was hardly any space in the compartment. It'll be more comfortable on the way back, his father assured him. We can buy tickets for the reserved seats when we have a little money with us after the saris are sold. Biju did not say anything. He was tired and excited and nervous and hungry all at the same time. Every time Papa stepped out of the train compartment at the station where the train stopped, he would warn Biju about the bundles. Sit on them, lie on them, rest your head on them, 
but do not take your eyes off them for even a minute. Someone may take them away, and then all will be lost for us. When they arrived in Delhi, his father carried the bundles while Biju took charge of their canvas bag. They took an auto rickshaw to where Bhabani Prasad Meher, Bappa's younger brother, lived. This was on a crowded street next to an area called Malvia Nagar. Some of the lamp posts gave out more light than they had in their entire village, thought Biju. The beautiful shops with large windows displayed sequined saris, shiny scarves, refrigerators, televisions and all sort of other box-shaped things that Biju had never seen before. Next to a chicken stall was the mechanic's shop, which belonged to Bhabani Dada. Bapa said they were lucky to be able to share his little room above it while they were in Delhi. The next morning, Biju woke late. His father and his dada were already discussing where the saris could be sold. His father made a note of the addresses and instructions to find the way to many parts of the huge city. Biju wished he could read the messages on the buses and on the huge hoardings. They got onto a bus. His father was lost in his own thoughts and did not seem to notice anything around him. After travelling on the bus for what seemed many hours and then walking more than two kilometres along a shady road, Biju and his father reached a big house. A uniformed man at the gate telephoned someone inside. Finally, they were allowed in and asked to follow another man who took them to BBG, the lady of the house. Biju and his father took off their slippers at the door, as they did at home, although the man leading them wore big black shoes. They were asked to sit on the carpet in a room full of big chairs with large cushions. After a little while, a young boy, a little older than Biju, came in and stared at him. He went out and called his mother. Mummy, there's a man here with two bundles for you, he shouted. A few minutes later, he came in again, followed by his mother. Biju helped Bappa to open the bundles, take out the saris one by one and open them all out. The whole carpet was covered in meters and meters of shining patterned silks and cottons in the brightest of colors. It looked as if a rainbow had fallen into the room and got all tangled up. This pallav is a very old traditional pattern. This has the latest design given by a foreign designer. This is a pure silk sari. This sari won a national award. Bapa tried to make the lady see each sari as special. Biju helped drape each sari over his father's shoulder so that the design was displayed more effectively. The boy watched his mother look carefully at the saris, but he was soon bored. Mummy, can I ask this boy to come and play in my room? He asked. His mother nodded absent-mindedly. Biju wondered whether he should stay with his father to help fold the saris that were spread across the room. Papa was silent. In the end, Biju was too curious to see the boy's room in the big house in the big city to resist. He got up and followed the boy. What is your name? asked the boy. Prajeswar Prasad Meher said Biju very carefully. What's yours? Bubbles. The boy's room was full of toys and gadgets in bright colours. It was like nothing Biju had ever seen. All the toys had some mechanical or electronic operating switch. Since Biju's home had no electricity, he could not manage them very well. Biju didn't know what he could do and how to play properly with bubbles. He felt shy, clumsy and a little silly. Suddenly in one corner, he saw a spinning wheel. Now, that looked familiar. Here was something he could work 
very well, just like his mother and sisters. When Bubbles saw Biju looking at the spinning wheel, he turned it round and asked, Do you know how to use this? My uncle bought it from an exhibition at Red Fort. He gave it to me to play with, but I don't know what to do with it. Biju's shyness and wonder left him. He put on a serious and important air. This is a charkha. Do you have some cotton? He asked. Bubbles did not. Biju went back to his father and dug deep into the bag, lying beside him. Some yarn, a bunch of cotton fluff and a hand spindle were in it. Ah, I found it. He whispered. But his father was busy displaying his saris to the lady and did not hear him. Biju went back to the boy's room and began twisting the cotton fluff. He attached it to the spinning wheel, moving his fingers deftly and turned the wheel all the while until the cotton fluff became yarn. You can do magic! shouted Bubbles, amazed. He pushed Biju away from the spinning wheel and sat before it himself. He tried to do what Biju did, but he could not. Show me, do it again! He demanded, determined to learn what Biju could do easily. He still couldn't. Biju found a smile spreading across his face. Not like that. See here. Do it this way. He said. About half an hour and many tries later, Biju taught the little boy how to spin. He also told him how his father put the yarn on the loom and how the long beautiful saris his mother was looking at were woven in their village, Jilminda, in Sambalpur in far away Odisha, a long train ride away. The little boy was fascinated and looked at Biju, as if he was from a magic world. Biju felt proud and big and very important. Suddenly he remembered his father might need his help to fold the saris and pack them away. Biju went back to the big sitting room. His father was smiling. The lady was smiling. Many saris were out of the bundle and lying beside the lady on the sofa. A wad of money lay beside Biju's father, waiting to wrap in his small handkerchief. Mummy! Mummy! This boy taught me magic. He put cotton fluff into that toy Uncle Gobin gave me and made long strings come out from the other end. Bubbles shouted. His mother laughed and said, Well, naturally, his papa is a jadugar too, a magician waving so many beautiful saris for me to show off this winter. No one else will have any like these. When my friends ask me where I bought them, I shall name some big shop so that they cannot get the same saris that I have. Biju's father looked modestly ahead at no one in particular and said, Well, we learn from our fathers and pass on the knowledge to our sons. And I passed it on to Bubbles Bhaiya, said Biju shyly, politely calling his new friend an elder brother and sharing his father's enjoyment of the morning's sale. Yes, mummy, said Bubbles with a mischievous smile. But when my friends ask me how I learn to spin on my charkha, I shall tell them that a jadugar from Jilminda village in Sambalpur taught me. Jaya Jaitli Jaya Jaitli has authored and published books including Crafts of Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh, The Craft Traditions of India, Vishwakarma's Children and Crafting Nature. She has assisted NCERT in creating a syllabus for the craft heritage of India's schools.